What's up guys, PJ here, and today we are taking a look at Supreme Leader Snoke in The Last Jedi, specifically how he will appear in The Last Jedi, as well as how they filmed him. Before we get into it though, I just want to throw out a quick spoiler warning for all of you guys who don't want to know any spoilers whatsoever about The Last Jedi. Over the course for The Force Awakens, we didn't get to see Supreme Leader Snoke in the flesh, and we only saw him as a massive, towering, menacing looking hologram. That, in The Last Jedi, is going to change. Supreme Leader Snoke is going to be making an appearance in person. He's going to appear before the same people he was towering over in The Force Awakens in Adam Driver's Kylo Ren and General Hux. No hologram for the entire course of the movie this time around. Snoke will have his own version of Imperial Guards, and if you guys saw my Captain Phasma new weapon video, I told you that she has a staff, so it's possible that Phasma could be face to face with Snoke as well after the destruction of Starkiller Base. Since The Last Jedi is going to pick up right where The Force Awakens left off, it seems really likely that that would happen, with General Hux bringing Kylo to him, and Phasma would be in the scene as well, with Snoke talking over the destruction of the base. Over the course of The Last Jedi's filming, making Star Wars' as sources, kept telling us that we were going to be very impressed with Supreme Leader Snoke in this movie. The big question everyone seemed to have was how tall was Snoke? Snoke will be revealed in person, which leads me to my next talking point which is how they tried a few different ways and techniques to film him. One of the ways they captured Snoke for The Last Jedi was with motion capture. While filming, The Force Awakens' Andy Serkis' only method for filming Snoke was by motion capture technology. Andy Serkis still used motion capture to capture Supreme Leader Snoke in The Last Jedi, but it wasn't on such a massive scale like it was for The Force Awakens. To go along with Snoke appearing in the flesh this time around, and the reduced usage of motion capture for The Last Jedi, a physical cloak was made for the Snoke character. So this confirms Snoke's physical appearance in The Last Jedi. What also adds to that confirmation is that Andy Serkis sported a pair of stilts, which he is no stranger to, because he has had to use stilts in other motion capture roles for other films. If we are going to have a Star Wars equivalent to this, think of it in a K2SO sort of way. During the filming for Rogue One, K2SO's actor Alan Tudyk used stilts and motion capture to make him come to life a bit more. Another way Ryan Johnson wanted to attempt to capture Snoke was with a practical puppet. In The Last Jedi, we will probably see at least one communication with Snoke in the form of his overarching hologram, but during those scenes where he is appearing as a tangible character, we could see Snoke appear as a practical puppet with facial features operated by the crew. Snoke is supposed to be 7 to 8 feet tall, which makes the likelihood that he is someone we have seen on screen before more unlikely. Snoke's arms are supposed to be unnaturally long, which gives the impression that he most likely isn't human. One of the other things that confirms Snoke's physical appearance and suggests that he won't be entirely motion capture this time around is that Andy Serkis spent an exceptional amount of time in makeup. What's really interesting about this is that Circus wasn't in makeup every day, some days he would go into makeup for hours, and other days he wouldn't have any applied at all. This means that there was multiple ways and multiple techniques used to try and capture the Snoke character this time around. For the Snoke puppet, they could try and implement the practical puppet and the use of some CGI to give Snoke's face more realistic movements, and this would make sense with Andy Circus spending an exceptional amount of time in makeup. Given the Star Wars equivalent we used earlier for the stilts and Alan Tudyk with K2SO, the Star Wars equivalent for the part of the filming process can be compared with Simon Pegg's Uncar Plutt in The Force Awakens. When J.J. Abrams was capturing the Uncar Plutt character, Abrams went with not only practical techniques, but also some CGI element techniques as well. So Ryan Johnson has clearly tried a lot of techniques to get the best Snoke performance he could, so it will be very interesting to see come December as to which techniques work best and which made it into the theatrical cut of the movie. That wraps things up for me here in this video guys, hope you enjoyed it, if you did please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thank you guys for watching, this is PJ and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.